the president does, of course, have the ability to declassify information. Absolutely. The, the, problem, no the problem with all of this is that this, this appears to be something that was either inadvertent or something that he made a split-second decision, and so that's why they're starting to question even more his fitness to be the president of the United States. And what will this do um, to our allies who are involved in intelligence sharing with us? Are they going to want to continue doing that with, with us? Are they going to second-guess themselves and say, maybe not? Well, but also, but also the issue, too, here is that... I think there is a conceivable defence that for a bloke who has literally never been in the world of all of this, you know, high-stakes conversation, but also knowing the lived experience of yes. what the consequences are of trading off on information, I get the steep learning curve, and I do think there is a, a, a an element of this that says, well, I think I can say that because that's what helps my relationship, that's what works, and because he hasn't been through this before, he's not aware of the consequences. Hell of a way if some bloke gets done over, as you say, in a rat hole somewhere in Syria to, for you to be on a learning curve. Again, there is a lot of wishful thinking that comes on all matters to do with Trump, whether you like, loathe or whatever about him. Where do you feel we sit tonight? Well, it does feel like we're at some sort of tipping point to me. I mean, if you take a look at Capitol Hill, it's absolute crickets. Um, it's, it's a similar um, tone and tenor to what we saw after the Access Hollywood tapes that were so damaging for the president. He did still go on and everything worked out just fine for him. But it does seem a, a, a bit different to me. I mean, we're hearing rumblings that this is very Nixonian, uh, rumblings of impeachment, and that this is, uh, you know, based on obstruction of justice. So that's what one side is saying. Then you've got the, the Trump diehards, though, going, no, this is just the mainstream media wanting to throw Donald Trump to the wolves. They've been waiting to do this, and, and they're, they're grappling the chance. I think what the big problem is here, though, is the pile-on. It has been all week. I mean, as a reporter, you don't want to go to bed at night <laughs> because you're going to miss something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is somebody who obviously has worked on telly in the US mm -hmm. and all. I mean, it is hilarious watching everyone fall back into their corners about, you know, catastrophizing Trump or covering yeah. up in many ways. Um, it is amazing to watch that stuff. But it's a communication problem, I think, on the White House that's really been exposed in the last week. I mean, particularly when President Trump went and did his interview with Lester Holt, and he basically said exactly the opposite of what he had said his reason for firing James Comey was. And then, then that puts the vice president in a strange position. It puts Kellyanne Conway in a strange position, Sean Spicer, everybody else, last you name it. it. And as an American, I have to say that it is frustrating that the White House is spending so much time putting out all of these fires every day and not spending time figuring out how are we going to fight ISIS? What are we going to do about our education system? What are we going to do about our immigration problem? This is the focus. And uh, some of those do have lasting impacts around the world. Well, too. let alone the healthcare bill that's currently, you know, being worked out through the Senate, let alone the tax thing right. that presumably has flow on effects around the world about whether or not joints like ours have to do stuff about it. So anyway, we're glad you're here. And it's always fun to have a chat about these things. Let's move on to other things. We'll do so straight after the break here on Paul Murray Live.